Have you ever wondered how a computer actually works? This is a game that uses puzzle solving to teach how to completely build a computer from scratch. I'm talking starting from literal binary and then going to a full computer. Here a signal flows from the input to the output. What I can do is select the input and switch it from on, which is green, to off, which is red. And that causes the signals to stop flowing. On, off, yes, no. And in binary, we would have one, zero. A lot of ways to talk about it. I'll be using on and off. Now we have something that's called a NAND gate. It takes two of those inputs before, of which I can control independently, and from it, it will output its own signal based on the inputs. So you can see here, if both of the inputs are off, it will output a signal, which we can mark here. If I have exactly one of the inputs on, it will still output a signal. Same with the other inputs, it will output a signal. But if both of them are on, then it will not output a signal. That's because NAND is short for not AND. It checks to see if inputs 1 and 2 are active. And if that's not the case, then it outputs a signal. Now I have the option to literally drag the previous level onto the screen. Got the two whole inputs. However, this level I have to create a NOT gate, which basically takes the input and inverts it. If the input is yes, then the output is no. If the input is no, then the output is yes. And that's pretty simple. If I just connect the input twice to the NAND gate, to both inputs, I could take the output and it would work ideally. The input is no and the output is yes. And if the input is yes, the output is no. Simple enough. And again, we now have the previous level condensed to a single thing, the NOT gate. I have to create what's called an AND gate which is stated down below, only sends a positive signal if the two inputs are also on. And remember I said before how NAND is basically not AND? What I can do is plug two inputs into the not AND and then use the not gate to reverse it. So it's like a not not AND and the nots are like negative signs that canceled out. So not not AND is like AND. And then you can just check the solution and it works. Now I have to make an OR gate which gives a yes output if at least one of the inputs are green. I have to construct this using only the building blocks from before, but not the AND gate, because that won't be necessary, but just the NOT gate and a NAND gate. And watch what happens if I just decide to negate both of the inputs before plugging them into the NAND gate. I've inverted both the inputs, and that will actually have the output match what is desired. Now I have to make a NOR gate, which is the opposite of OR. The exact opposite, actually. So what I can do is set up what would be a NOR gate, as we determined in the previous level. This would give the output for OR, but then I could just reverse it using the NOT gate to create NOT OR. And then you can see the outputs match up. Now I have everything as a building block. I have to make a circuit that's always on. Well, let's consider this. I take a signal, I plug it into a NOT gate, and I take that same signal and just kind of drag it off to the side. That means exactly one of these two nodes will give a signal, either the top one or the bottom one. And notice they use the word OR because I could plug them into an OR gate, which would look like this. And OR says, well, as long as one of them are on, it'll give in a green output. And I can use that to show that it'll always be on. And now we have our first overall lesson. And you may have picked up that there's a really handy shortcut for each of these symbols. Remember how I said if you take OR then invert the output, you get NOR? Same with NAND, if you take NAND and then invert the output, you get AND. It can work another way too, where if you have OR then invert the inputs, you would have a NAND gate. And if you have NOR and invert the inputs, you would have an AND gate. Just the shortcut helps to remember. Using all these building blocks, I have to create something that only outputs yes on the second tick, where input one is yes and input two is no. So the simplest way I can think of doing it would actually be inverting the second input. And in the case of the second column, both of these inputs would be on. So I just use an AND gate to check that they're both on. And if they're both on, send the signal. And we can check that right now. Doesn't work for both off, does work for first input on, and then doesn't work for the other two. Now we gotta build an exclusive OR gate, also called an XOR gate, which only sends a positive output if exactly one of the inputs are on. I'm sure there's a bunch of ways to do this, but the way I'm gonna do it 
is taking the OR gate and a NAND gate. I will plug each of the inputs to each of them respectively and throw in an AND gate afterwards. Because the idea is with both NAND and OR, you could take their outputs, overlay them on top of each other, and you see that the only times that both of them are on are the exact times that only one of the inputs are on. That should give it to me. I don't know if it's the most efficient way to do it, but it works. Now I gotta make a bigger OR gate. And all I need to do is output a yes, as long as at least one of the inputs are yes. So what I can do is just kind of chain OR gates. Do an OR of the first two, and then take that output, and do an OR with the third one as a result. And that... <laughs> I guess it gave it to me quickly. Similar idea with AND. If there's three inputs, I can just chain AND gates. I need to make sure all three would be on, so this will only send a yes if the first two are on, and then I can AND that with the third one, and this would output if only all three are on. Now I gotta create the inverse of XOR, called an XNOR. If it's gonna be the opposite of XOR, then all I gotta do is take the inputs and then put a NOT gate after the XOR. If it's the opposite, then I'll make it the opposite. Now there's a binary racer level. Let's do a quick crash course on binary. Binary is a way to represent any number using only ones and zeros. How does that work? First, let's take a normal number like 69. In our normal counting system, it's called decimal. The six represents how many tens are in the number, and the nine represents how many ones are in the number. Six tens plus nine ones gets you 69. Binary looks more like this. In 69, there is one 64, one four, and one one. You can see that these are kind of on and off switches. And remember how like an on is a one and an off is a zero? That would mean in binary, 69 would be represented by 1,000,101. And it almost might be easier at a smaller number. If all the switches are off, you would have a 0, which represents 0. If the rightmost switch is on, you would have a 1, which represents 1. And then the next number is, of course, 2, which must be represented by 1, 0. And I guess I'm supposed to do that, but quickly. What is 1 in binary? 1. What is 2 in binary? 2. What is 3 in binary? 2 plus 1, which is 3. What is 13 in binary? 8 plus 4 plus 1. What is 6 in binary? 4 plus 2. What is 11 in binary? 8, 2, 1. What is 12 in binary? 8, 4. What is 1 in binary? Really making go fast. What is 14 in binary? Uh, 8, 4, 2. 31 in binary. It will be all five of these. What is 3 in binary? 2 plus 1. 2 in binary, 2. 37 is 32 plus 4 plus 1. 62 is 36. Uh, it will be everything except for whoops whoops whoop, da, 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 da. there we go oh i didn't press submit i had it but i had to press the button now i want to do better no 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 i'm coming back i don't give a shit if this makes it in the video i just want a good binary score a few moments later oh shit they take away the keep a tracker thing i had to do it all in my head 210 in binary oh good god uh yeah i don't i don't fucking know that I can't do that quickly enough. I'm gonna try this. Oh, I actually got it. Holy shit. Well, this one is definitely the end of my rope. Might be that. Oh, holy shit, I got it. <laughs> 191. Um, this, I still have 63 to go, which should be all of these. I must have miscounted. <laughs> okay, neat. I made it to level seven. That was for my own pleasure. This is a funky level. I have four inputs, and I must output yes only if two or more of the inputs are yes. Interesting. Well, there's one way that I could easily verify it. If the top two inputs happen to both be on, they went into this and, it would give a positive output. Same goes with the uh, the bottom two. What's funny though, is it actually covers a lot of the cases. There's only one case that it doesn't cover, where only one of the top two is on, and only one of the bottom two is on, which would look something like this. If one of the top two is on, I would have an OR coming out of them. And if one of the bottom two is on, I could connect those to an OR. And if that were the case, both of these would be on, which I could check with an AND gate. So then I would have three potential cases. If at least one of these were on, then I would know that I would have two signals inputs on. So I could put that into a three-way OR gate, connect that to the output, check it, run it, complete it. With four inputs, only output yes if an odd number of the inputs are on. And I can only use three of the components. 
So if I have one signal on or if I have three signals on, I think I know what it would be, but this is kind of crazy to think about. I think I got to use a lot of exclusive ORs. It only output a yes if the inputs are different. So think about this, right? It outputs a yes if exactly one of these two are on. One is odd. It outputs a no if zero or two of the inputs are on, which is even. So yes if odd, no if even. I can do the same with the bottom two. Both of these outputs are yes if odd, no if even. If both of the outputs are yes, odd plus odd is even, which means I should output no. But if exactly one of them is on, I would have odd plus even, which is odd. So I would do a third X or gate, which only gives an output if exactly one of the inputs is on. So I should get an odd plus an even into XOR giving me a green signal, which is right. Now we're dealing with an output that is binary. The output should be equal to the number of inputs that are on. So if I have all four inputs on, it would output a four. And a four in binary is expressed as one zero zero. That is to say, there is one four, zero twos, and zero ones. And this output here, I guess, receives binaries. So this would be the number of ones, this would be the number of twos, this would be the number of fours. How do I count them? We have to go bit by bit here. First, think about the number of ones. If there is one one, that means it's an odd number. And if there's zero ones, it's an even number. So I would want this wire to only be on if there's an odd number of inputs, which we just did. And if you remember, it looked like this, just three XORs. And then the number of fours is pretty easy. In this case, there would be only one four if all four of the inputs were on. So I would just check with AND gates to ensure that all of them are on. Now the number of twos might be a bit trickier. This middle bit is only on if two or three of the inputs are on. Now what I could do is take that thing from earlier where I made that thing that only gave a green signal if two or more of the inputs were on, but then remove the possibility of all four being on. And this was the thing from earlier, so it only gives a positive output if two or more of the signals are on. Then what I have to do is make sure that not four signals are on. So I would take the thing that's on if four signals are on, invert it, and then plug that into an AND gate with the other outputs. And that should give me it. Feels sloppy, but it works. And now we're doing actual addition. The inputs aren't just greens and reds, they're zeros and ones. I add the first input to the second input and then put it into the sum and carry. You can think of the sum and carry as a two-digit binary number, where sum is the smaller part of the binary number and carry is the bigger part. For example, one plus zero is one, which represented in binary is one. Same with zero plus one is one, but one plus one in binary is equal to one zero, which means two. Or you could break it down and see the desired sum matches up with the XOR's outputs, is actually exactly the same. And you can see the desired carries outputs line up directly with the ANDs outputs. So if I link those up and let it run, you get the desired outcome. So we started with simple on off switches and then learned how to add. If you want to see me continue the journey in building a computer, let me know and I'll see you all in the next episode. Thank you for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed. Have a wonderful day and peace.